In this video, we'll look at how to analyze lift and drag in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. Here I've got a part representing a fixed wing drone. And to get started setting up an aerodynamics analysis using flow simulation, I'll just want to make sure I have the flow simulation add-in loaded. And then go to the project wizard to create a new project. I'm going to choose the US unit system. We could specify velocity in miles per hour or knots. We're going to need to use an external analysis. And we may want to enable gravity. We'll set this into the minus y direction. The fluid here is going to be air. On this screen here for initial conditions, we can specify what speed this aircraft is flying at. So I'm going to set it to 40 miles an hour. And this is going to move the air in the entire computational domain past our aircraft. So the aircraft is stationary, but the air is moving past it. Um, similarly, we can also set here aerodynamic angles to allow us to set an angle of attack where we're actually rotating the fluid around the plane to simulate various different angles of attack. Um, and these same methods can also be used for you know, automobiles and ground vehicles. You would just want to make sure that you model the ground as a separate part or body and that the computational domain penetrates slightly into that ground piece. All right, we'll click Finish. And our flow simulation project gets created. We can see the sizing of the computational domain here. And based on the velocity direction we specify, um, it will size itself such that it's longer behind the plane, a couple lengths behind the plane, and maybe one in front of it, which is a good guideline to follow. If we aren't going to be adjusting the yaw angle of the plane, then we could use symmetry. So I can click on my computational domain and I can adjust its size. And you'll notice it'll kind of snap down to zero here. I've effectively reduced the size of the problem in half, but to enable symmetry, I need to edit the definition of the computational domain and apply it right here. Okay, so we're not going to have any real boundary conditions since we already have that uh, what's called ambient velocity. And we can right click on our input data to show that ambient velocity, that little blue arrow here representing all the air flowing around the plane. So we don't need boundary conditions, but we should set up goals. And since I only have this uh, one vehicle here, I'm going to just insert a global goal. And I'm going to track force in the Z direction and force in the Y direction. So we'll click the check mark. And essentially the force in the Y direction is going to become our lift. And the force in the Z direction is going to become our drag. Creating a quality mesh is quite important for aerodynamic problems to get reasonable values for lift and drag. So let's look at what's going on inside the global mesh right now. And we can check the checkbox to show the basic mesh. For external flow problems like this, we have this ratio slider we can adjust to put more density around the aircraft or airfoil or automobile, whatever it might be, if we want to. I'm going to leave that at one, though, and show you how we can place some refinements specifically around the regions we're interested in. I'll right click on my mesh folder and insert a local mesh. And for my selection, I'm going to just select the solid body here. But you could be selecting entire components of assemblies. Now there's various different refinement methods we can use, but I'm going to uncheck all these other ones and use one that's specially made for aerodynamics, which is equidistant refinement. This allows us to define multiple layers of refinement 
that are spaced off by a certain distance. So I'm going to set the maximum refinement level to 4. That'll mean 4 subdivisions from these base cell sizes we see on the screen. And then how far away from the aircraft I want these to extend. So I'm going to say 0 0.02 feet and 0 0.08 feet. That's about a quarter inch and one inch respectively. So we'll click the check mark. And then I might want to take a look at this mesh. So I'll right click and create it. Once it's done, my results will load up mesh only and I can insert a cut plot. So I'll use the right plane. And we can see the effects of the equidistant refinement here. We've got level four refinement right near the body of the aircraft extending out about a quarter inch. And then about an inch all the way around it refined at the next level down. Um, so you could refine this even more if you want going to maybe level five, but this should be sufficient to get us some ballpark values. I'll go ahead and run this. And I'll show my goals plot. So we'll see the solution continue to iterate until these lift and drag forces converge. Now, I said force Y and force Z correspond to lift and drag. That's true so long as we're not using the aerodynamic angles option to vary angle of attack. If we are, then we just need to use some trigonometry to get the correct lift and drag forces from this global Z and Y force. Once the solution is converged, we'll go back to SOLIDWORKS to look at our results. And we might want to insert a cut plot also onto that right plane. And we can look at velocity. Maybe I'll raise this to 50 colors. And we can see we, of course, are getting high velocity gradient above the wing. For aerodynamic problems, especially something you'll want to enable is the display boundary layer option. So I'm going to rename this to velocity and this to mesh. By default, flow may do some averaging across the boundary layer, which is fine for maybe some thermal problems and things. But in your options for a velocity plot, you have the option to display the boundary layer. And then we can see more clearly the boundary layer region. We could also edit this plot to enable something like streamlines or vectors alongside our velocity to help us visualize where the flow is laminar and where it might be turbulent. Another parameter we might be interested in is surface plots of pressure. So we can use the airfoil faces here and plot pressure on these. And we'll expect to see a, high, a low pressure region on the top of the airfoil and a higher pressure region on the bottom, which is what's producing our lifting force. And of course, to get our numerical results out, we can use our goals. So we'll insert a goal plot and show these two parameters. We wanna make sure we're looking at the value column for the final iterations results. And so everything we've done here has been for one airspeed and one angle of attack. If you're looking for some resources on how to iterate and vary these things in an automated fashion, as well as more general tips related to aerodynamics analysis, then check out the links in the video description below. Hopefully you found this video helpful and let us know in the comments what type of content you'd like to see next.